We're told while we're inside that we're worthless and no one cares about us. To come out and to see the support, that's amazing. So, you know, I'm, I'm learning things every day, you know. I'm originally from Evanston, Illinois. There's a divider line between Evanston and Chicago. So if we were hanging out in, on the Evanston side, you know, the police would tell us to go across the street to Chicago. And then the Chicago police would rush us back over to the Evanston side. Actually, when we were younger, we made a, you know, a game of it really, you know, not having anything to do. That became something to do. That lack of guidance that we had. A lot of people like myself were raised by single mothers. Sometimes not even a mother or father being there, you know, being raised by a grandparent or an older sibling. They didn't have the time to really invest in us the way they wanted. They were constantly trying to put food on the table and pay rent. A lot of us tried to be the breadwinner of the house. That led to drug activity, selling drugs, or some type of hustle or some type of way to make money. And that ultimately led to us going down the road of being in prison. And, you know, we were willing to make those sacrifices. I was sentenced to natural life plus 30 years at the age of 20. My mother, she tried to pay for my court fees and, you know, to give me the representation. She had uh, put her house up. She ended up losing her house, you know, uh, in the process of doing that. Before I went in, I had a, a big family. While my incarceration, I had uh, lost pretty much everybody, my mother, my father. Those are the tragedies. Basically, my family was, you know, taken away while I was incarcerated. When my mother passed and my father passed, because I had a, the sentence that I had, I wasn't even um, allowed to go to the uh, funeral. You know, they'll let you talk on the phone to a family member, but other than that, you're not able to, you know, say goodbye. It was rough. People really suffer inside these places. You just lock them away and don't even want to look at them. You know, so I, I don't think that's uh, the right thing. We used to try to look for the common denominator and why are we all here? And now you see a lot of post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD within our community, seeing people killed and violent acts. You know, they say hurt people hurt people. You have victims on all sides. In a true justice system, you need to look at all of the people as being victims and try to restore and repair that. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our final panel. Of trying to stop hospital 508. Okay, love you, man. When you have a long prison sentence, it's difficult to get an education. So I, you know, fought to get an education. I eventually got my associate's degree while I was incarcerated. So I had to go in front of the Prison Review Board of Illinois, and I was granted a clemency through a, a toolkit that I used from the Illinois Prison Project. My natural life sentence was turned into a life sentence with parole eligibility. Now I'm working with the Illinois Prison Project, assisting men and women reduce their incarceration time. Getting up early in the morning, and, um, staying up to two, three in the morning. On my days off, I'm still doing my work, so. We are more than an inmate or a convict. I'm more, I'm a father. You know, I'm a grandfather, I'm an uncle. I think that people need to know that. You know, that we are more than what people try to portray us to be. With that, I hope that, uh, you know, they will begin to see us as, as humans.